<laughs> right, we ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Cool. So we are back, and today we have a very special guest, Ben. Um, you reached out to me on Instagram, told me a story, and I thought there is absolutely zero chance that we're not having this guy on. So here you are. Um, for those of you that don't know you, if you could just give a little bit of background and then we'll jump straight in. So my name is Ben Cull. I'm 23 from Bournemouth. Uh, used to play football for Southampton's youth team uh, and under 23s. Uh, and then got diagnosed with cancer when I was 17. Yeah. So let's take it back to the beginning. So like growing up, what was, what was your childhood like? So... Didn't get into the football football scene until early teens, so 13. And that, um, just played for my local youth team, to be fair. Just Greenfields, they were called. Uh, just enjoyed playing football as a kid, to be fair. Um, and then I just got scouted one day by Portsmouth. Went to Portsmouth for a trial. And then Southampton got wind that I went to Portsmouth for a trial. And then they were like, come here for a trial. And then... How old? 13. Yeah, so I got Pretty offered a four-year nice. contract at Portsmouth <coughs> at the age of 13. Nice. Wow. Uh, and then Southampton heard that and were like, well, if Portsmouth offering you a four-year contract, then we might as well have a look at you. And at the time, <laughs> my little brother was at Southampton as well, so it kind of made sense for me to sign for them rather than, rather than football. Portsmouth. So football runs in the family? Yeah, so me, my little brother and my little sister who have played for England and Southampton. Wow. My younger sister's just moved from Arsenal ladies' first team to Millwall, ladies' first team. Wow, shit, it really um, is in the all, family. <laughs> yeah, we've all got Holy England shit. caps and England uh, shirts on the wall at home. So it's weird because you'd look at my parents and you wouldn't think that they're sporting any way at all. <laughs> and when you were growing up, did you think like, oh, I want to be a footballer? Or did you oh, kind of like fall yeah, into it? Yeah, as soon as I, I was, it's funny, like my ma- mindset now is completely different. But when I was 14, I thought I was going to be the, the big dog. I went w- went into pro- uh, secondary school every day wearing my uh, Saints bench jacket. <laughs> and literally like wore the, Rep the merch the whole time round, and that <coughs> nice. was I was that kid at school that everyone hated because it was just like, oh, screw you, like you're <laughs> you're where I want to be type thing. Yeah, and what's your like go on, Carol? And it was just yeah, I went to school two days a week, Monday and Friday. You play football the rest. Play football wow. and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's like every kid's dream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally, it was. If you think about a kid's dream, it was literally that. It was, it was fun, but then I didn't. It was a lot of sacrifice. Like I didn't have a normal upgrow and didn't go to parties. Didn't get into like drinking and that didn't I'm trying to think the first time I ever went out out I think I was like 19 something like that oh. were you very disciplined yeah when I was playing football I was like like head down I knew I wanted to play football and I knew there was nothing else that you really I really wanted to do and I was luckily I was good enough like, I got a phone call at the age of 50 uh 14 even from my manager at the time going oh England want you to go for a training camp and like the likes of you know Trent Arnold Alexander Arnold for Liverpool. I'm the yeah, worst wow. person yeah. in football. <laughs> Derek's your man. Yeah, so him, Tom Davies for Everton. I trained with them um, and that. And then, obviously, when you get to a certain level, the really, really good ones just disappear and you don't see them, see them anymore. And then it's weird, like, not many of the people I played with are still playing football these days. It's, you'd think, oh, you're 18, professional contract for Southampton. You'd think that like 90% of them would make a living in the game. It's funny That's you say crazy. that. Oh, right. Because I remember watching very good people fuck up really good careers because they would rather drink and smoke. I know, I know several, well, I'm not going to name names, but <laughs> I know yeah, a, lot, yeah. a lot of people yeah. that, it, especially when I got diagnosed, I would remember being in the changing room and people would be like, oh, let's go, Casino, let's go out tonight. All this, blah blah blah. Because they got they, money. They they, young. Yeah. Oh, it was a competition. Who had the best jacket? Who had the best clothes? Who had yeah. the best shoes? Like, obviously, everyone's trying to keep up with everyone, but not everyone's on the same wage packet. Yeah. So it's uh, dick measuring contest all the time. <laughs> That's crazy. In a century, yeah. Um, How old were you at this point? Seventeen. Okay. And like, some of them would just be like, they'd be moaning. They'd be like, oh, I can't be asked to play football today. I can't be asked to train. Oh, I don't want to go to Middlesbrough this weekend. I'd rather like go out. Like, and, that, and I'd be like, I'd give my left leg to, to be in your position. And that's like, but then you, they learn the hard way type thing. You, you know, the ones that knuckle down because they make it. But then the ones that don't, as you, you can tell when the ones have distracted. And what's your like fondest memory from that period, like growing up? I have to say living in digs. So with a family uh, in Hive 
and there was four of us there. And what's our, Diggs? It's like a host family. Okay. So I stayed. Uh, Nikki and Dave were the, the parents, and then there was four of us staying in this annex, and it was uh, it was the f- we had some funny times just. <laughs> Bosh! <laughs> we have to keep that in. <laughs> and you actually got it as well. He's fucking got a fly, <laughs> Jackie Chan shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, living in the digs in an annex. Uh, just, a- just the, the stuff we got up to it was so funny. Like I just remember we, like, we were kind of in a separate bit of the house, but yeah. just you think playing Xbox with each other, and then just like when it snowed, there was we had a few snowball fights in the house, just like four. Young adults just pissing around. How old are you at that point? 17. Yeah. Uh, no. S- when did I move in there? At 16 uh, until the age of 19. I guess it's just like that thing where you're like, you're young, like you've got the career that you want. Like oh, you just live, like there's like probably no better feeling than that, you know? Like you've achieved, you're, you're on this path that you want to be on and like, yeah, you're just they, they were such so a, carefree. Like, yeah, with a solid was, team. Yeah, they were such a good That's bunch of lads as well. They weren't, like I said, they weren't the ones that were going out and, being distracted they had their their goal set on on decent things and I just remember just every day we'd obviously train eight till five uh, and then we'd get home have a toasty or whatever then we'd sit play xbox with each other do some sort of like recovery session gym session or whatever and then dinner and watch the champions league every night like on Wednesdays Tuesdays and Wednesdays and that and it was just like a real good bunch of lads to be fair I don't speak that much to them anymore because obviously they've some of them are in Scotland one's over in America um but yeah, those were definitely that's definitely the highlight of my career well the career back then. Yeah. Nice. I can imagine. Okay, cool. Now let's talk about the the period where you got diagnosed. Like what was the how did how did that come around? Like how did you find out? It's weird, so obviously it's like so super rare. Um How like rare are we talking? Naught point four percent of chance of getting it. It's pretty fucking rare. Wow. Yeah, I think four four people in the whole of the UK every year get wow, fuck. bone cancer. Um and so I was 17, playing football, like living life, brink of getting a professional contract. Um, just playing a foot, normal football game. I got kneed in the back of my leg, just normal tackle. Went down, uh, didn't come off. Thought it was just a dead leg. Got back to playing weeks later, whatever it was, didn't take me out at all. And then at the end of the season, I just had a big old lump on the side of my leg. And my physio was just like, oh, that's got a big lump there from when you got kicked. So I was like, oh, well, Obviously, routine was like, well, you can, it's not causing me any pain, so I carried on playing. Um, they then were like, okay, well, at the end of the season, we'll have a little look at it. Let's get if it's a ball of blood that needs removing, we'll look at getting uh, operation to get it removed, and that kind of thing. So, no thoughts of cancer at all at the time. Went up to uh, where was it, Reading, um, and they had to take a biopsy just to make sure it wasn't anything bad. And obviously, the chances were so low, but they. The doctor mentioned it, and it was just straight over your head. You wouldn't you think, oh, they're mentioning it because they have to, type yeah. thing. Um, and then phone call from the physio, and it was just like, oh, you and your mum and dad need to come up to see the doctor today, like type thing. It was like, it was like, oh, that's a bit odd. At this point, I still didn't really think much of it. Just thought, oh, it might be a little bit worse than than the usual. Yeah. And then just yeah, sat down in front of him, and he just went, oh yeah, you've you've got bone cancer, and it was just like, what? You just Age of 17, world's flying. No idea what it is, probably. No idea. I obviously, you don't even know what that means, you know? Like, yeah, you can't process fa- it. It's not in the family. It's not genetic. I'm f- really fortunate enough that no one close to me has ever had it and been affected by it. So it was just like, what? Really? And it's just like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, you won't ever play football again. And I was just like, nah, you're, you're lying. Like, oh, okay, you're saying that. He was like, yeah, no, you have to have, you're lucky you're keeping your leg. And I was like, you sure you're talking to me? And wow. they were like, yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay, well, you're saying that, but in my head, I'm like, well, I'll have this operation, knee replacement, and I'll work my ass off to get back playing football. And then, obviously, you go for your treatment or whatever, have the operation, and then you, it's only once you've had the operation that you're like, fuck, <laughs> I can't run, I could just about walk, can't jump, can't change direction. So I was just like that's kind of when it hit, hits you in the, in the perspective of you can't play football anymore. Wow. What operation was it? And a knee, full knee replacement. So you can see on my leg, massive Which scar. Which in itself at that age yeah, is not what, common. What, why was that needed? Because the cancer was growing from the bone. So obviously they 
treated me with chemotherapy and radiotherapy to kill as much of it as possible. Uh, and then, obviously, once they've killed as much of it as possible, it's obviously used to remo- remove it. Uh, so, obviously, the only way to do that with me keeping my leg was to then give me a knee replacement. So, it was either that or lose my leg. Oh. I was like, I think obviously, you're going to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. <laughs> and let's just take it back a little bit again. Like, in that moment, like, what, like, what, what goes through your head? Like, what, how, like, explain what that feels like in that moment to be in that situation. I uh, personally, I didn't feel bad yeah. from personally myself. I felt bad for other people. I felt for my mum and dad, my girlfriend at the time, my friends. Um, like, why do you think that was? Oh, it's just, it's, well, I can't imagine being in their shoes, to be honest. Like, I love my life. I've got nothing to complain about. But I personally think the people around me have it much tougher than I do. Yeah. People might not think that, but I personally think it, it's so much harder to watch someone you love go through that sort of life-changing and demoralising thing rather than going through it yourself. Because personally, me going through it myself, I just... Crack on. Just get on with it. Yeah, exactly. Just crack on. You don't wow. think about it. You don't let it change what you do. But then, obviously, there's days where they'll... My girlfriend or my parents are like, look... like They look at you differently. And I I remember... I remember crying to my mum and just being like, I don't want to be that sick kid. Yeah. You know, like that stereotype... Like, I don't want people to change 100%. the way they look at me. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure be not of, of course empathetic etc but like you don't you want don't want to them be, to treat you differently yeah, for, I, yeah i was always just a normal kid like my friends are great they don't treat me any differently they take the piss out of me they they, they make jokes so do i sometimes they go over the line sometimes they don't <laughs> but no it's, secretly crying inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no there's certain things and they're like ben you can't say that and i'm like <laughs> yeah Oh, well. I've got the card, mate. I can pull yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a disabled badge. I can yeah. just... Do you actually have a disabled badge? I've got a disabled badge. It's, there's so many silver linings, mate. I That's can't cool. that wherever I want. Cool. I've had so many, not arguments with other people, but like I'll pop, rock up to my local Tesco's or whatever next to Margaret and Karen in their little K, KA or something. And they'll look at me and go... And then I'll just slap it on the door. And I'll go... I've had, I've had a few people like... Go, Question it. Oh, you know, you know, apart from the disabled badge, I was like, yeah, I know, I've got a disabled badge, and they're like, oh, by any chance, what's wrong with you? And I was like, do you really ask those questions? <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's nuts! nuts. So I've, crazy. My, uh, it was funny. Um, went to the vets once, and I parked in a disabled bay, and this woman doesn't say anything to me. I walk into the vets with um, the dogs, and she makes a comment to my girlfriend and goes, "It's disgusting how you guys are parking in a disabled bay." And my girlfriend goes, oh, no, he's got a disabled badge. He's, he's got cancer. And she, she laughed in her face. She went, ha, 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 as if, like, as if my girlfriend would lie to her. Wow. wow. And then my girlfriend came in and told me. I went straight out. And she was in the queue for the pharmacy at the time. I ripped her a new one right in front of the whole um, queue. I was like, I can't say what I said on <laughs> it said yeah. to her face. But good. no, it was it's just you, unbelievable. Like, you, doesn't affect you, so we just and don't think. Just, like, uh, off the back of that, though, I think it's probably because, like, just, like, look at you. you yeah, yeah, I was yeah, quite yeah. shocked. You turn up, you're happy, you're smiling, <laughs> you're living life, you're driving a nice car. I've got absolutely zero to compl- complain about, and that's what I've always... Like, I've met some people before, and they're in, like, far worse situations, yeah. and I've met people that aren't here anymore, but, like, just... Come on, life. <laughs> Get hit by a bus tomorrow. It's true. Like, why uh, like I always thought when I was younger I was like oh okay I need to save for a mortgage you like have this perfect plan for your life don't you you think oh I have a girlfriend I have kids by 22 I'm 23 now I'm like, I don't want kids for for another few years and just it's just pull that like, mic a little bit closer and it just changes completely like and it's just like well what am I going to do now I got obviously it came back when I was 20 just before my 21st birthday so, so when did you have your knee up at the age of 18 and in February, I want to say 20, it's been five years, so 2017. And at that okay. point, did they say, right, that's gone now? Yeah, so I got, I had some, a little bit more chemo after, but that's just standard. And then it was just like, okay, well, you're in remission, as it's called. And then they just... What so, does that mean? You're basically given a green pass? So in my head, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Like, and in, in a sense, you have, I've got like a scar, a uh, tattoo on my chest. And that's the, like the day I got diagnosed free, basically, and, and all good. So that happened. Do you ring the little bell? <laughs> there isn't one on the on the ward that I'm on, which got, I think it's like more the kids ward that that's on. I was a bit gutted. I'd want to ring the fucking I, bell. I'd, I'd, fucking, I'd have gone down to the yeah. kids ward myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And talk, talk us through that process. So, like, obviously, you say chemo, but like for a lot of people, they probably don't even know what the fuck that even just, means. So, like, what, ha- like, what happens in that process? Like, where do we start? I so it's IV drugs basically. So they're all called fancy names. I couldn't tell you what some of them are called, but it's just a combination of drugs that they're all designed to kill re, re, uh, cells that reproduce rapidly. So hair cells, nails, nail follicles. Sorry, hair follicles, nails. Um, what other things? Um, taste anything that reproduces quickly obviously because cancer is a cell that reproduces quickly so you lose your hair so i'm lucky enough that my hair's grown back in between some of my treatments so i've got got strong hair yeah (laughs) it's got my dad's hair but yeah so if you saw me what six weeks ago i didn't have any hair nothing at all eyebrows eyelashes very very thin um i've got some photos to be fair um you have to send us to yeah, them after. Yeah, we'll put them yeah. up. Yeah, we'll, we'll put, put them, them up. Send, the them, send them to us afterwards, and we'll um, we'll put them up on the screen. Yeah. So Max can whiz it up. <laughs> Magic yeah. Max. Yeah. It's just just here. <laughs> 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 Trying to find. So that was literally twenty uh, fifth June. Oh my god! Wow. So literally six weeks ago, yeah. I had no hair, barely any beard. And it's come back. You're fucking growing strong, lad. Oh, <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, that's good. fucking I impressive. I don't think I could grow that much hair in that amount of time. <laughs> Vin Diesel. That's your girlfriend. Yeah. yeah You've mentioned her a few times. Oh, she's amazing. Tell us about her. Uh, so she's called Daisy. She's just turned 21. And that we've been together for the last three, three and a half years. So wow, nice. She's been there while. for a pretty big portion of it, though. Yeah, very much so. So I met her December... The December before I then got re-diagnosed. So I'd known her for about a, just a, under a year by the time I got, um, that it came back. And she's, I, the hats off, I don't know how she deals with me, to yeah. be honest. Like, obviously, uh, my moods and that are up and down, but like, she's never once batted an eyelid, never once looked like she's going anywhere. And she's years beyond her age. Yeah. Got to put a ring on it at some point, I think. But <laughs> you said it on the fucking podcast now, bro. So. <laughs> <laughs> what a commitment to make on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you'll have it as your morning yeah. alarm. Got to put a ring on it. You'll be, there, like, you'll be saying to her, like, don't listen to the podcast. You don't need to listen to it. Don't listen to <laughs> she's, it. She's dropped a few hints. <laughs> so um, what, what's like your, um, what's your daily routine? What are you, what are you doing these days, man? Most days is wake up nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and then just see what, like, you know, you guys know Lee. He's always working from home, so it's like I might go for a coffee with him, I might go for lunch whilst he's working, uh, play golf. Hopefully his employers don't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Lee playing golf and cycling every day, working from yeah. home. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, just playing golf pretty much. And then just doing doing fun things, like I've been on holiday twice in the last six weeks, um, going to Poland next week with my brother, going to France again in September with mum and dad. Oh, nice. Going, Whereabouts in France? Uh, Dordogne. I'm not sure Euro, we go Euro camping and stuff. Oh wow! And that cool. we used to do it. We've done it for years. Like I was a kid. Like my parents never had much money as a growing up, and they gave up an awful lot for us to be able to play football. Like they got themselves in a fair amount of debt, but like driving us everywhere, yeah. like just to make it happen. Yeah, literally making it happen. And that so we we would always go on like Euro camp holidays. So we drive to Dover, Calais, stay a couple of nights somewhere at, like in the middle of France, and then six hours down to the sort of south of France and stay in a, a campsite in the river, like. My child had grown up. I just love it. Like I've, I prefer those sorts of holidays. Yeah. I've just been to Magaluf, Mallorca, with my girlfriend, and that was an interesting holiday. But in terms of sitting by a pool, relaxing, eating baguette, you can't really complain. Yeah, definitely. Have you created like That's a cool. bucket list? I've got a bucket list. Yeah, there's some some crazy things on. Go on, listen. Like, what, what, what come on. There's top five also, items. What, 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 just to put it in context. So when you're diagnosed, they said five years. So this is a re-diagnosis, right? Yeah, so Talk at the age, of, through that, just so at age of 17, it. obviously they diagnose you with it. I went through all that knee replacement, got given the all clear. Obviously then year and a half, two years down the line, one of my normal routine scans came up as a, like a cloud in my chest. And to them, they knew what that meant. To me, I didn't know what that meant. So then that was obviously, oh, it's come back and it's in your lungs now. Um, so they then obviously... They go, oh, well, it's come back in your lungs, so we need to treat you, but we need to give you a realistic, like, this isn't curable. It's all the treatments that I'm having and have had are all life-prolonging ones and ones that are designed to slow it down from growing. But they, they gave me, they said less than 4% of people 
uh, live longer than five years. Uh, what year are you up to, just for context? Say that again? What year are you up to now? So that was just before my 21st birthday, got really diagnosed, and I'm 24 in October. So basically three years three deep. Years deep. Um, and I still feel as fit as I did five years ago when I was playing football. I remember That's listening, incredible. I think I listened on the, maybe it was on the BBC News one, or I might have even been on an Instagram post or something, like how when you walked into that office and got the re-diagnosis, like you'd never felt healthier. Honestly, I was gymming almost every single day. Uh, I was in some, I was in a pretty good shape for at the time. Um, I was working in the, I was literally working. So I, I do personal training and worked for a bank. So I would work six till nine, uh, six till nine at the gym. I'd then go from the gym straight to the bank, work ten till uh, three at the bank, and then I'd go back to the gym and work four till ten. What? And I did that Sick. five. I did that five days, five days a week. So is that what you went into after you finished football? Went into personal training? Yeah, I was like, I wanted what I wanted. I was like, oh, I wanted something sporty. They offered coaching and stuff at the football club. I was like, that's too close to. Football. Were they quite supportive? Yeah, massively. They um, they was like, oh, well, you become one of the coaches for the youth team, build your way up to them. Obviously, being a like a youth team coach type thing, if you want to do that. And I was like, it's too close to home. So I was like, I I don't want to be in. Involved in football because it was just I want to be doing it rather than the one rubbing salt in the wounds. Yeah, effectively, sure. basically. Um, so I then was like, oh, I like gym. I was like, I could become a personal trainer. Got the qualifications for that. Uh, started working for a gym in Shirley, uh, and then Mum was like, Shirley is in here. Yeah, in Southampton. Why? Because uh, back in Bournemouth at this point, right? Uh, Whilst I was studying to become a personal trainer, I was still in Southampton. Okay, because okay. They, so Southampton offered me an extension of my contract after my knee replacement to do rehab and study whatever I wanted to do. That's so cool. they basically, if so I wanted to do chiropractic or something or A11 biology, they would have helped me sort that out. It's amazing. But I was like, I want to do personal training. Um, so I did my personal training qualifications and then uh, someone at the football club knew someone that ran a gym uh, in Shirley and... Um, don't know if you'd notice. Do you know where Quick Fit is? Mm, yes, no. possibly. Um, I'm trying to think where else. Is. Yeah, down the bottom, just before you go down the hill. Yeah, at the top, it's above yeah. Quick Fit. The gym yeah. is a private gym. Okay, oh, okay. Started working there, and then Mum was like, "I know you're working, like working really hard, etc. But I want you to get um, a job that pays into like a pension and stuff." Because I was self-employed at the gym at the time. So Mum was like, "Ah, oh, get why don't you get a part-time job with this bank? She works for the bank as well." So I was like. Hmm. Well, I guess it would the way it worked, like I said, working six till nine, ten till three, four till ten. I was like, kind of fits in, gives me something to do in that middle period because no one really wants personal training in that middle it, period. Yeah. Middle of the day. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I was basically killing time in Southampton anyway. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I could do that. So what started working part time for that for them? Where do we get to? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so you went into personal training yeah. after the after football. Yeah. And then, so mum was like, can you just get a, a job that pays into a pension? I was like, yeah, I'll do that. So then... So we're going through that and then went in for a routine checkup. And then... And is it... Obviously, you had bone cancer in the knee. Is it normal that they would check everywhere for cancer? Or is it like a blood test? Like, how does that... So depending on what type of cancer because obviously lung on, to from knee to lung is yes, but it's a pretty the, big difference yeah, right? so it's the, but it's the same type of cancer so Got, obviously oh, okay. it comes from an original place so basically I never didn't have cancer it kind of was just somewhere in me waiting to then start Got growing it. again as such is what they basically how they explained it to me so obviously I got given the all clear it was fine and then it was an x-ray that showed the because obviously they know what they're looking at. Yeah. It just showed a, like a cloud in your lungs. And obviously I had a checkup every three months. And obviously all of a sudden then that cloud appears. It's like, oh, well, they obviously know what that is. But in terms of finding it in the first place, you have like CT scans and uh, PET scans. in Getting bloods taken all, all the time type thing. So mainly CT scan because it show you... So you have to fast. You don't eat for f- five hours. So there's no shit in you? And then they put some stuff through you which then the cancer then absorbs because it absorbs sugar and stuff like that so you've got no sugar in your body at this point so then they inject you with sugar then the cancer then glows up on the images and then they can right. go okay well this it's quite clever because he shows me the images and I'm like okay well you can see that like I've got a basically like a golf ball size one 
on the right side of my chest and you can clearly see that one but then he can see ones like differentiate like small ones from like normal cells and I'm just like yeah. that looks like every, yeah, everything if else if you looked at everything that glows on a CT scan you think yeah <laughs> blimey fucking hell there's <laughs> loads going on there <laughs> wow. yeah. but they like they know what they're looking and at and what went through your head when you got reignited or diagnosed was it just like here fuck's sake here we go again yeah. <laughs> that that 5% do they that's 5% make it past 5 years 4% make yeah. it 4%. 2 5 years okay 2 5 years Does not past 5 years make it out of it you hear it all the time I think they say that sort of, that's well my mindset is they say that stuff because they have to okay. like not being funny I've is there a chance that you could go on and live a normal life minus the chemo every three weeks yeah I think for, so yeah I'm not I, and doctors will say otherwise but in terms of I'm planning on living for another 20 30 years good <laughs> yeah, good. That's <laughs> all that. I'm loving it. yeah so I think it's a, I, from my point of view they just say it because they have to um, what happens when you go in now do they say oh you're fit and healthy like it's cool or? Uh, so they'll go oh how are you how are you feeling any cough any breathlessness any pain type thing and my answer is always no I feel fine and then it's like, okay, well, how was treatment last week? It was just like, oh, well, it made me feel a little bit sick, a little bit tired. If you're this healthy, the doctor's not like, what the fuck? Are they not like I confused f- at well, like why just, you're so like healthy? I think, well, from the reaction that I get from them is like the last time I saw him, he was like, you're obviously really healthy now and that, but like, just to be realistic, like... That word, yeah. I fucking hate that word. <laughs> yeah. Realistic, shove it up your fucking ass. Yeah, it's yeah. like you know the stat, like fucking, like nine in every ten bi- small businesses fail. All right, fine, but I'm not nine in ten, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's fucking apply to me. Thanks yeah. for letting yeah. us know yeah. your yeah. realistic statistic. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I think. You go, oh, like, like it could go downhill and go down quite quickly. So just like to prepare yourself, that thing. And I ignored it. Obviously, my mum and dad and Mrs heard it and we're like oh yeah, yeah and i was just like oh sh- don't like, worry about it they say that because they have to type thing it should but- be illegal for people to say that because all it does is put a shit image in most people obviously you're strong-minded and i fucking love that incredibly and you're not letting that bother you and that's like huge it's literally what we were talking about that. yesterday it or is, the other day on our podcast mindset. about mindset and you have that nailed but you're in the one percent of people that have that nailed Mm. The majority of people that don't, and what they're going to do is they're going to hear that shit from the doctors, and they're going to go home, and their whole gonna life start shutting is going to revolve around that. fucking regardless of the cancer. Oh, I, I, no, I just couldn't do it. I just like my my mindset's always been, well, until it happens, cross that bridge when it happens, type of thing. Yeah. And like, I, I've known a few people. My other half knows a few people. They get told, "Oh, you've got a couple of years to live," and they live ten, fifteen years longer, type of thing. Wow. Yeah. Treatments are. Change, ever changing CBD oil I take that pretty much every day and yeah on that actually that's the question I wanted to ask is like have you sought out like alternative therapies or alternative things that you think may make a difference to yeah so obviously the CBD stuff I take and I got a CBD I vape the other it. day it was fuck <laughs> mate it literally tastes like smoking weed it's fucking horrible <laughs> yeah this is just like this. on hangouts in the morning like, high as high. No, it's just CBD it's not fucking actual like cannabis oil but have you, but have you like, is that the kind of stuff that you've like yeah, looked into? Like I, when I first started taking it, I noticed a difference straight away like in terms of how I felt. Like I took it whilst I was on treatment and just... And is that pure CBD oil or cannabis proper, like resin? Proper proper stuff. Like you can't get it off of... Got to make it? Yeah, basically. Got well, I don't make it, but I'm, I know someone that knows someone that knows someone. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fucked up because when you talk about the medicinal use of cannabis, like this is where stuff like that should be legalised. Oh, and 100%. what difference did that make when you start taking it? Like, so chemo made me feel nauseous, like basically like a really bad hangover. And when I started taking it, I didn't feel, I felt I slept nine hours straight, didn't wake up and then felt, woke up in the morning, like feeling good. And really? prior to that, I felt like pretty rubbish. And then when I do take it, I don't take it every day because I forget some days, but like I do, when I do take it, I wake up. Just like a little really syringe so of like. Yeah, literally yeah. a little, well, like before bed or something. underneath your tongue before yeah. bed just makes you feel like I don't feel Wake, like waking up feeling a bit groggy and that I don't wake up feeling like that at all what other benefits that do oh, I can't I couldn't tell you I don't know I, I've read it's like one of the best things to take a long all time because do you remember a long time ago my mum had that false cancer diagnosis and I remember like fucking scouring the internet for hours false. like Luminec. yeah God. She, she had like a diagnosis where it was um, I I'll butcher the name if I try and say it but she had like a 
it was like in her like stomach area. Yeah. And she was like going, she, they basically were like, yeah, this is how long you've got to live, blah, blah, blah. Um, she was like going in and she went to go and she like cut off her hair in preparation for chemo. What uh, the fuck? And wow. she was going in like having checkups or whatever. Like they were talking to her, like checking symptoms, blah, 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 running blood tests, running tests. And they went in to do the chemo, the first first chemo session and the doctor was like there's just something not right here like you are you're not in any way shape or form ill like it doesn't make any sense like i don't want to put you through this first session of chemo before we run a few more tests and just get yeah like i want to get another opinion on this before we do it and this is like this is over a period of like six like six months because do you remember i quit i I left yo so i could be closer i I could could be closer to home so that i could be near the hospital when my mom was getting treatment wow and yeah, she, she went through. This was like probably like a six month period, and then obviously like we had to go through. I'm obviously going through the whole process at the time. I was 21, yeah. So we have to sign all these fucking papers and stuff. Like mum has to get a will prepped, like all this stuff, like in preparation because they're like you haven't got very long to live. It was it, it was like a couple of years, like not very long at all. Like it was like maybe like one to two. I think I can't remember off the top of my head. It was so long ago now, but went through that whole thing and then at the end of it they were just like yeah no you're actually fine <laughs> what? wow no. that's what like, i mean like i'm not saying that my, the doctors are wrong but yeah like, yeah but you feel fine <laughs> <laughs> you do feel fine <laughs> All right, oh, back, oh, oh. Back, back to the bucket list bucket list yeah go on i'm very intrigued so i like golf so there's a couple of golf ones on there course. <laughs> some big courses yeah and then i think just like most of them like the cliche things like go to the maldives go nice Holiday with the missus, uh, track day. Is there anything like super different on there? The thing is, you say cliche, yeah, but how like, many are on there? There's nothing wrong with like, like 19. Are you having to share them all? Yeah, yeah. So, including most of them, ones most, you've done, most of them are going to trips. Okay. Um, so, one of them was go to Silverstone. I went with my dad a few weeks back. So, that, which was what's awesome. the F1 or to drive? F1, yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. it, was, oh, it was unbelievable. Was it? Me, just, just me and my dad, we went up. Um, in the camper van, stayed in one of the campsites and that and went Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Nice. And it was just, oh, he loves his F1 as well. So just, I don't get to do many, me and my dad don't have too many things in common, but cars and golf are one. Nice. So I had a great time there. Cool. Uh, I've got play St. Andrews, watch a live golf event, uh, go to New York at Christmas, um, road trip to Monaco. Nice. Disneyland, Florida. Uh, do a cruise, uh, Euro camp with my family and my other half's family, which is happening in September. Nice. Um, <laughs> try lobster and oysters. <laughs> <laughs> have you not done that I've yet? I've never done You've that. Never, no. No, no way. I, 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 well, well, do you don't have plans this weekend? Oysters, honestly, but <laughs> lobster. <laughs> All right. One of these days as you can, I'm going to take you to the best place for lobster and oysters. We're going to go to a hut on the island. I've been there. On the boat. Oh, it's amazing there. They do the best lobsters and oysters. We're going to go this weekend and tick that off. Oh, that's amazing. That would be, uh, only if you're sure, because that would be 100 sick. million percent we're doing it this that's, weekend. It's a weird one. I've, I've, I've never been to a place where, like, I've been to the hut before, but I, I can't remember what I got. But my other half's shellfish, allergic to shellfish. So I was like, well, I can't really get a lobster. I think I dated someone <laughs> once that was like seafood. <laughs> It's very short lived. <laughs> <laughs> cool, what else we got? Um, okay, cool. Uh, track day, uh, and then Pebble Beach golf, and then play golf in a pro am. That was the only one I nice. thought of this the other day. I was sat in bed with my other half and just like, oh, what things do we want to do? Because obviously, skydiving. Well, you done that? I've never Don't done that. <laughs> You couldn't? I, I couldn't. <laughs> really? I, really? I hate heights. That's a cliche I one. To, I went up Eiffel Tower, I went up to the middle level, and I was just like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I completed that one, ticked it off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know how people do it. Th- yeah, even going up there, what, what's the place in the Burj Khalifa? Yeah. Nah, I couldn't do that. Just, as cool as it would be, nah. You've been to I Dubai? Like no, that's one of the bucket list ones. Okay, sorry, we interrupt you. Keep going. Uh, and then play golf in a pro-am type thing. So, um, yeah, that's it, basically. There's, I think, 15... 15 to 19 and on there cool. most of them are just like going places yeah, that I haven't been nice. before you said it's cliche yeah cool. but that's like that's the type of shit you want to do you know like, yeah, yeah. most of them will be with my other half and with family like type thing because I think I've been to Florida before with my parents but I was too young to remember yeah. type thing okay. um, and obviously you've had COVID for the last yeah like, I was un- talk about that a little bit so obviously uh, I was unlucky enough that 
obviously I had treatment before COVID and then as COVID came, I finished treatment and was fine. Like they were like, oh, you don't need, I still had cancer, but they were like, you don't need chemotherapy. So I was like, oh, okay, cool, sound. So I'll have a while of uh, being able to do what I want. Obviously COVID comes, you can't leave the country. So I'm then <laughs> not having treatment, but can't That's... do anything. Um, and then as soon as COVID and travel restrictions lift, oh, you've got to go back on treatment. Just, oh, <laughs> What a Fuck fucking piss take. <laughs> oh, that is a proper piss take. One, okay. one, one thing I want to ask you, if, if I can change the subject a little bit, is um, you're like blowing me away a little bit with this like positive energy. Like seriously. I like, don't, I, how, I don't, people say, I, what I just don't know. I don't know inspiring. how I, It is truly inspiring. Like, I obviously have days where I'm not so good. Like I've, it's, it's always again, like a cycle of like going to hospital, like, I'll have a checkup with my, so I've got a round of treatment next week, a round of treatment in three weeks time after that. And then I'll have a scan, which will then determine whether the treatment's working or doing anything. The time prior that I was having treatment, they obviously, they were like, oh, the treatment's not working. So we need to change what you're doing, change and go on to a different type of treatment. And it's those sort of, not very often, but it's those sort of days where it's like, not news you want to hear, but it's just news you can't, you can't avoid those conversations. Yeah, sure that are the ones that I'm like, I have a bit of a lull, but I, I honestly don't know any other way apart from not to be grateful for what I've got and who I've got. And on that, like who's been your oh. like biggest influence or like, where do you draw that motivation from? Like, where does that come from? You know, parents for yeah. sure. Um, they don't, can you, don't can you tell, uh, tell us a bit about your parents? Uh, Julie Simon, <laughs> she's, God, I want to get her age wrong. Yeah, don't uh, pass on that bit. Pass on <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Skip on the age. <laughs> um, my mum wears the trousers out of their relationship. Uh, <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah. Dude. Your dad's <laughs> going to be fuming. Oh, he knows it as well. Right. <laughs> so girlfriend can't listen to the podcast. Parents can't listen to the fucking podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, my dad's, he's one in a million in terms of he'll go above and beyond. You ring him at three o'clock in the morning, four or five hours away, he's getting in the car and coming and picking you up and making sure you're all right. I, speaking on that note on a tangent I wrote one of my cars off uh, when I was going through treatment I was 18 I wrote my fir- one of my first cars off at I think it was about 12 o'clock at night in Verwood and I rang him and go I've just put my car in the back of someone's garden <laughs> and he's gone I'm on my way type thing and he's like he'll, he's an absolute diamond and he he won't want me to say but he's he's a bit of a wet wipe but <laughs> the best kind the best kind of wet wipe how did you write your car off I just aquaplaned and gone straight rather than left and then straight into the back of someone's head. Luckily, no one was going. Shut that's up, mate. The other way. Do you know, someone sat next to you. <laughs> I've heard this story. <laughs> aquaplaned in my car. <laughs> and I know what car it was. <laughs> it's due to be returned in two weeks. But it's been yeah. two weeks for a very long time. Uh, yeah, no, I've heard Happens to the story. best of us, man. Dom knows. Dom knows <laughs> yeah. all Mine, about that. <laughs> Mine was a little 400 quid Mini Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> His was a 475,000 <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of similarities we can draw from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure down. But yeah, wait, so that that like inspiration and motivation, like what what do they just like not ever get down about it? Do they try and like obviously support you as best they can? Like what what is it talked about like? in the family? Not directly. We we've had a few counselling. So we went for a bit of a rough patch. Me and my mum, we me and my mum are very similar. We went for a bit of a rough patch about a year and a half ago. Um, because we just kept clashing and she's a workaholic. Like I have to keep, her boss has to keep telling her to take time off to spend time with me. Like I went for lunch with her today and it was lovely, but like she needs to be told by people above her to like. Where does she work? Uh, for the bank. So she's fairly high up there. I have a huge respect for them as a bank now from what you've told me in the last few oh, hours. Yes, yeah. mental. I couldn't, could not thank just the fact that I, again, another reason why, because most people I know stresses are financial and I'm really, really lucky that I don't have that stress. Like I get paid regardless whether I work or not and I get full salary and I, it's just, uh, it's what, I don't know how to explain it. Um, the fact that that's what their policies Shout are. Out. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. No one will ever know, know or hear this within <laughs> that bank, but I have a huge respect for them for that. Yeah. yeah it's nuts. So yeah, that just, that's inspiring as well. Yeah. So just from that, just mum and dad, they they won't want me to speak about it, but we don't speak about it. Like, but they get emotional about it, and the fact that they they said it on BBC, um, like if they if they could swap places with me, they would, and that like 
you must be hard for them, that. you know, like you said, like it's so you much feel bad for them. for them almost because it's Yeah, it's so much harder for them, I personally think. Imagine, uh, I don't have kids and I well, I can't imagine like obviously people who have kids will be able to relate, but yeah. are I, you gonna have kids? I hope so. I can't have I don't well, I don't know. I don't think I can have kids the normal way because obviously chemotherapy or your sperm is one of the reproducing cells that chemotherapy attacks. So one of the risks of having it is being infertile. But when I was a nipper, when I first got diagnosed, they were like, okay, we'll need to put some of your stuff in a pot f- no. for one day if you want to have kids. Do they? So, yeah, there's... That's awesome. Yeah, oh, put a wow. fucking wow. ring on that. <laughs> put a ring on that and ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> she said we have to move out first. So That's next on the list. Yeah, that's that's certainly in the plans. But yeah, it's, Where it's, would you move to? Um... Somewhere in Bournemouth, it's so close to the beach, aren't we? So it's not. It's, again, it's one of those things. It's like my parents are so chill and so good that they've they're like, oh, don't charge me rent. And they're like, spend your money on things you want to spend your money on, your, like nice car, going for, going places, food, that kind of thing. So I'm lucky. Again, shout out to mum and dad that yeah. I have a roof over my head and don't have real. don't have to pay a penny really. What ticks your box? What makes you happy? Outside of golf, it's just a, that's a hard You're a question. Fucking man. humble guy too. Yeah, mm. you're very very humble. Oh, I really don't know. Car, cars. Um, absolutely uh, a bit cringe, but my girlfriend. That's cute. Doing things yeah, that's with her, like For sure. there's certain things that, um, I do that I'm like, oh, like I end up going, oh, I want to do that with you rather than on my own because share that experience um what does make me happy sound like quite <laughs> quite difficult to please me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> food yeah food yeah um and where do you do you actually try and draw inspiration what if you do where do you try and draw it from do you watch like other people's videos or like is there like, obviously I don't know what the support network's like for this kind of thing. Like, do do is there like group fucking sessions? Yeah, there and is. Stuff? To be fair, like, like, I've like, seen there's a group on Facebook that they do um, hosted by the Teenage Cancer Trust. They do like events and stuff, and you can get tickets to go see comedians and um, do you do it? go out in group. Yeah, I went to it was a good few years ago. I went to see Jack Whitehall at the Bic with a bunch of guys all in. We were all in the same boat. Um, and the social worker and that was like you obviously then get to meet people in the same situation and you get chatting about certain things and it's like you don't play top trumps of who's got it worse but <laughs> yeah yeah like you, again you like you meet people in far worse situations and again that's what I think puts me in a better mindset um again I say people I've met people that aren't here anymore um I've got a one of the guys I used to live with and have all that fun with at, at, at digs um, his mum got diagnosed with breast cancer and she's no longer with us she lost her battle I want to say about two years ago her name was Kaz and she was she, I have to say she was probably my biggest inspiration when yeah. I was going through what I was going through um, she was going through it and so was I at the same time and she turned up to watch him play and obviously I'd be on the sidelines watching watching them play and we'd sit and chat and that and she was just the most beautiful kind soul that you like you think no one deserves it but like some people just don't deserve it yeah. and it's just what she was one of those people that uh you that you just think why type yeah. thing and she was just an amazing person i know ollie i'll have to send this to ollie to, to show him but um him and his dad lee uh he's called ollie she he's called lee yeah God, it's been a while since i've spoken about <laughs> them um yeah, they, they were a massive part of, or she was particularly a massive part of me being positive. Wow. And tell me about the fundraising, because I, uh, I saw that online earlier. I just thought, what can I do for, for like, in terms of like the, the teenage cancer ward, like in Southampton, that, of like where I get my treatment all the time, it's just unreal and it's all charity funded. And it's just like, I have obviously certain wards adult wards like they're not really nice places to be around especially when you're going through sort of chemo and stuff and they've got a ward there that's completely charity funded and 
and that and the, the social workers that work for them completely funded by charity type thing and without that sort of thing they don't exist and it's just like well i i've got so much spare time in my hands and i know a lot of people and got some contacts so it's just like well let's do some things to to give back and one of the first things when i got re-diagnosed was like oh well i'm shaving my hair my barber cut my hair for free we streamed it type thing and then uh, a really close friend of my mum's dave did a charity boxing match he nicest guy ever you wouldn't think he'd throw a punch but he uh <laughs> then did training <laughs> for on. i think he won <laughs> it, was, it was literally it was the last thing that ever happened before covid happened um oh, all right down at the bic and he did a he did a boxing fight um and then i've got some i've got some plans i want to do like a car show like in like an airport field or something that's cool oh, um a golf day like but I've, we were meant to do it this summer but just with i've obviously wasn't planning on going back on treatment but then obviously got told i had to so things changed so it'll be next year now but like we started getting some things together with um some companies and that and getting people people's names forward to to help organize it type thing have you had a lot of buying to be fair we hadn't we hadn't got past the like where we were going to do it that was the main we asked around a few places or whatever you didn't get, didn't get much response from i don't either we didn't send the right emails to the right people or what have you but um it just kind of got put on a backlog when I got put back onto treatment type thing. But we really want to do, like, I went, I've been to a few car shows this year, and you just think, well, with enough organisation and enough, like, how big is the, like, how the sky's the limit, really, in terms of what you could raise for, for, for a char- for a charity like that on a de- on a nice day in the summer, 100%. with a lot of people with a lot of contacts. Like, you can if you can put what hundred cars in a field and then get a f- few hundred people there, you're already you're making a bit of money for for a good cause give it two oh, weeks you can do that we should have the Ventador back <laughs> <laughs> i'll drive maybe allow, maybe allow four weeks as long as it's safe. a nice day mate i'll be there <laughs> um okay I'm cool i'm sure we can help you with that yeah 100 yeah, percent. that's what i was about sure. to say it's like we, we could we'll this, this, just that. this whole bucket list i just like i want to help you do yeah, that me too. i want to like that is such a sick bucket list, firstly. That's because you fucking love golf. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love golf. So I'll be in the program with you. Um, Us two are fucking shit at golf. <laughs> we'll do the cars <laughs> and the eating sections. Yeah. Yeah. And Max is going to record it all. <laughs> Perfect. And if you could like, if you could turn back time and speak to your 18 year old self, what would you tell him? I don't know, to be fair, because there's not an awful lot that I could change. But I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure I would have done anything really differently, to be fair. Some I thought you were going to say that. I thought you were going to say yeah. that. Like, I don't think... It sounds like you were living the absolute life that you wanted to live. Yeah. I, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, from from day dot to be fair the yeah. only thing I'd say is like try prevent COVID that's the only thing I probably would, <laughs> would have tried to do well. get yourself out of the country before it happens yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no I, I don't think what, what made things, you reach out to us I just thought like you're you guys give off such a good persona of time sticking and I know um, obviously you're I've seen a lot of things about you and Medzi and stuff and I just thought like it's like crazy how life sh- short how short life is Very true. and that like people were people listening will be like thinking now I've got a plan for my pension in 40 years time you might not see that pension Very true. you uh like go out buy that car chat that bird up that you've always wanted to <laughs> um Daisy, he means like, yeah. like yeah. free your time. <laughs> not you. <either. laughs> he, he means like other people do that. Not, yeah. not, him, not him. Don't worry. Yeah, just you li- like I said, you could literally not see next week, and too many people waste their time, ta- waste like their time not doing what Fucking they want true. to do, worrying about what people think, not living what, in the moment. Well, yeah, exactly that. Worrying about what people think, worrying about how something is going to happen in ten years' time. And you just can't... I just don't think you can live like that. Like, I honestly... I, find, I don't I, know what I'm doing in two months' time, let alone 
what I could be doing next year. But do you know what? You don't even make that an option to affect you. Yeah. Like, from what it seems, like, you're just like, like you said, like, you have to live in the now. Take, like, make the most of time as all of us do. But you're not even making it an option in your head to, like, oh, I need to worry about this. You're like, no, fuck that. I'm going to fucking live my life. Yeah. No. I'm- it's almost like you've just switched it off. I just don't think about it. Like, cool. That's yeah. happening. I've, but- obviously, I've got plans for, like, going on holiday and stuff in the weeks. But in terms of, like, the, oh, you've got, like, analogy of I've got two years left type thing. I don't have two years left. I've got far, I've got far, far longer than that. 100%. And- my girlfriend's got exactly the same attitude and so have my parents and I think that's why we've got such a like a strange relationship where we don't talk about it because it's like I feel like it's inevitable that something's going to come up that's going to either treatment wise that's going to change my life in the sense of they'll be they'll say that you're you're better or it just I just think it's inevitable that I'll be fine do you actively look for solutions and cures uh, my other half family do so much research and they, they put like this fucking A4 Harry Potter sized book in front of my <laughs> oncologist to say, oh, here's all the stuff we've uh, researched and stuff. <laughs> and that, and there's like things in, there's loads of things in Europe um, and that, things in America, trials. Um, I guess that's a risk, isn't it? Like you don't, yeah. you don't want to go into a trial and then end up fucking dying from the trial. <laughs> yeah. And then they, like the, the, with the oncologist, the oncologist is like, well, you're fit and healthy now. Yeah. So in terms of Don't want to gamble going, too over, much. going over to America or to um, Europe kind of is not a last resort, but like if there's still things that can be done in the UK yeah. on the NHS, then we'll do those. Don't want to jump first. the gun. Because yeah. again, some of these, are, they're not out there as, oh, this is going to make you better type thing. It's um, out there as like, oh, this will another pl- life prolonging treatment type thing yeah so they're like well what's the point what's the point in we'll cross that bridge when gambling as and such yeah. is needed and then it's oh it's so funny how doctors work you then say money's not an issue like they go they open up a different door and it's like really yeah like we said we said obviously he puts a few options in front of me for the treatment i'm on now type thing and then it was like well we'd looked at a few in europe and that and like he was like oh they're not on the nhs so that we obviously then responded, we're like, oh, well, if they're not on the NHS, like money's not an issue. I'm fortunate enough that we know a few people that have said, oh, if you need f- funding for this, if you like, if you need that sort of thing, then they'll sponsor it or look into helping at least fundraising it. Type yeah, yeah. Thing. Wow. And, um, and that, so then they then have gone, oh, okay, well, if that's then the case, then there's some of these, they could be d- further down the line that they could become quite useful type thing. And it's like, oh. It's, it's interesting when you say, oh, money talks. Crazy world. <laughs> yeah. Especially even in the medicine world. Yeah. I think the medical industry is very notoriously like that, though, isn't Do it? Do you have any uh, goals that you're working towards at the moment? Ungolf related. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds <laughs> just like yeah. Aaron. Uh, I don't know. Like, I've. I've I want to get married. I want to have kids. Obviously, that will come with time, Daisy. Um, <laughs> as and when she's ready. Um, <laughs> not, I haven't got anything that I've got. What I want, I haven't got a goal that I want to achieve by a certain time. I just think, just living every day to the yeah, fullest. Yeah, like, I just want to be it. happy, and I am happy. So, like. That's a fucking you massive goal in itself. Genuinely happy. Yeah, I got. I honestly wake up every day, and I've got two beautiful dogs. I've got what dogs? Daisy, two blue French bulldogs. Uh, I've they're pretty much what I take them for a walk every day, every other day. Uh, I think they got an Instagram, haven't they? We'll pull up their Instagram and put it in there. Oh, have they got yeah, their own I'm, Instagram? I'm sure they, I think I think they do. I'm sure. Do they? Got, I'm sure yeah. they've got an Instagram from. <laughs> The ones in the coats are mine, and then all the little ones are their puppies. So we had a litter of puppies 18 months ago. Wow, that's nuts. Very that's probably cool. one of my proudest achievements, was bringing up seven so cool. little blue French bulldogs from, from being born to, to, uh, to into existence. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, we'll put up their Instagram. We'll put their Instagram and handle in there, that in the description on YouTube. Oh, my Last God, that's adorable. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've got two... 
beautiful dogs, amazing mum and dad, girlfriend, her family are incredible, nice car, no pressures to move out and that kind of thing. So I really, really, really am grateful for where I am in life. What do you think this, like, what's the most important thing that this experience has taught you? Just, again, life short, buy that car that you want. I, I drove a A1 before I got re-diagnosed and was saving money, f- saving money up to um, move out and, uh, and that. And then mum and dad were like, go buy a car. And I was like, me and dad, literally, I think it was a week after I got re-diagnosed, me and dad went down to Mercedes and were like, test drove a C43 and a C63. I wanted the C63. Dad was like, you're going to kill yourself. You're like, so get something fucking four right wheel. on, man. Get, <laughs> Let's go. Get something, get something four wheel drive. And I was like, okay then. And then within, an, again, another week, I'd bought a C43. That's nuts. Nice. Yeah. Had a cool plate too. Yeah. I've seen yeah. you about your plate. I never knew who you are, but yeah, I yeah, I've definitely seen your plate. I've definitely, I've definitely seen, seen, it. seen it. I spend way too much money on fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Especially nowadays. Life's yeah. short. Life's short, oh, man. Exactly. Fuck it. Spend the money on fuel. Yeah, exactly. So one thing, just yeah life short nice I think that's a pretty good point to wrap up is there anything else you want to add at all or anything you want to ask any of us yeah anything you want to ask us you've been grilled by us for the last yeah, yeah. Years. Hmm. I'm looking forward to taking you for oysters and lobster this <laughs> <Yeah>. weekend <laughs> I don't know I just hope, hopefully I won't be sick <laughs> after tasting an oyster spit it out yeah I've heard some grim things about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't, like, don't bother no they're honestly. fucking great they <laughs> lobster are, no yes. they are delicious <laughs> Yeah, where can people find you? What's your Instagram handle? Where can people donate money? What's the where, so where to my go? Instagram is at c u l l underscore b e n. I think perfect. Yeah, and then link in the bio. For yeah, there's a link in the bio for the like. Uh, yeah, just giving, and it's got again, it's got my whole story from start to finish of when I got diagnosed to re-diagnosis, me growing up playing football type thing. It's pretty much exactly what we talked about yeah. written there so if anyone's missed it then yeah, it's all one there. last thing for me when are you going to do this next fundraising and what are you going to do what what is the next fundraiser the next fundraiser I have to say it's going to have to be a car show okay of some sorts and when would you like to achieve that by I want it to be good weather so I, I think a good time could be my birthday When's around that? October October yeah. mm. send it we will help you. Yeah. I just need to find a. The only I need to find a location like that's. I've, that's I, doable as like well. Like there's a few fields down by Bournemouth Airport on there that just I need to get hold of someone who's. You know Nick as well. Nick, reach yeah. out. He will know a location or between us lot. Yeah. We will and we'll help you and get behind yeah, it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I just think that'd be. There's like-minded people and yeah. just oh, cars are cool, so that's probably the only. That'd thing. That'd be an awesome day. Thank we'll you make for it coming happen. down today. Thank awesome. you so no, much, man. You're a fucking you, you're an inspiration. You've inspiration. Def- you, you've blow- I said it earlier, but you've blown my mind. Seriously. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's, I'm honoured to be able to come yeah. on here and I chat. I knew when you reached out and I read your story, like we had to have you on, man. Because yeah. like, just being able to have that positivity. And that mindset. And that, that mindset. You just, you just got a fucking energy that Not I many people. love it. I, but I don't, it's, it's funny that like you say that. I just don't see it any, I don't see myself in any other light. No other option. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's like this. this is you pretty much it's fucking awesome man thank you very yeah, much for coming yeah. on everyone so check out thank the Instagram you. go to the Just Giving uh, donate your money and we'll make sure we put a car show on and we'll make it happen let's do this awesome thank, thank you, you very much. thanks man thank you nice peace. peace peace sweet <laughs> <laughs>